Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Goldwing Docs. Today we have a product review. This is an interesting product that I think you're going to like. And believe it or not, this is how they sent it to me. They did send me a free one to review. And uh, I think it's going to be interesting. So let's uh, open this up and see what's inside. I had to laugh when I opened up the package and it had this green ribbon tied around it. So thanks guys for, oh no, they've really tied it on here. I'm gonna have to cut it off. All right, so this is the box. As you know, well, I, I'm sure you've seen it because you know what this is about because you've seen the title of the video. What this is, is it, oh, look at that. It's like an Easter basket. They put it inside this box with this green stuff how nice. Okay. They sent me an Easter gift. So this is my Easter gift. It is a Sizap, size app tracker. So if you've been around on my channel for any amount of time, you will have seen that I did a review on the Monimoto tracker system. That is a, a little box that you install. It's a battery powered box. You hide it in your motorcycle and it has a key fob. And when the key fob is near the thing and it detects motion, everything is good and it, it just sits there and does nothing. However, if the bike gets moved or bumped or anything and that key fob is not nearby, it assumes that the bike is either being messed with or stolen or something bad is happening and it sets off an alarm it, and it works really well. The problem is that it works on the cell phone network and you have to actually buy a SIM card and then pay to have that SIM card topped up uh, once a year and it's not cheap. It's, it's, it's upwards of $50 a year. So um, yes, you get the security of having a bike uh, being monitored and if it gets stolen, it sends you GPS tracking and tells you where the bike is and, it, and your phone goes off and so on, but it's kind of expensive. This is different. This works the same way and, it, and it's meant for motorcycles, but you can track anything with it. Um, so there's two main differences with this one. The first difference is it is not battery powered. Where the Monimoto, you put batteries in it and it has to be long life lithium batteries. You have to change them once a year. This instead runs off the battery of your bike. Uh, so you wire it into the electrical system of your bike. And the, the second difference with this is yes, it uses a cellular network to track and, and work with your phone. However, there are no ongoing charges. Once you install this, it's free to use. So that's a huge difference. So what we're gonna do is let's open this up, see what's inside, and then we'll put it in the bike and give it a try. I've actually had this thing for a little while now. However, they've been working on getting the mobile app ready to go for it. So they have now just released it for Android and I believe the iPhone version of the app will be out very, very shortly. And let's open the seal here. So now that that's out, okay, press here. And there we go. Okay, so download the app, the Sysapp application from the App Store or Play Market. Connect it to the app. You, you have to write the IMEI, which is the serial number from the device. Connect it to your vehicle. Ride for a while outdoors, make sure it works. And then they have a little link to it, the tutorial. And then here is my IMEI number, which I'm not going to show because that is a private serial number. And then here is the device. And it's actually smaller than I thought it would be. I've seen pictures of this online. I wonder if this is a newer version because the, the versions that I saw online were actually quite a bit larger than this. So that's actually nice. So it looks like um, there's uh, some kind of bracket that it snaps into, I think. Don't wanna break it, but... Uh, yeah, these tabs appear to snap into it, but I'm not really able to get it out. So I'm wondering if that's not actually meant to come out. I'm not sure. In any case, these are the only connections that you have to ha to use. There's simply a positive and negative. You just put it on your battery terminals. Uh, actually, I would not suggest putting this directly on the battery terminals unless there's a fuse in here, because if if you did that and one of these wires were to chafe and, and short out, you could end up with a fire. So uh, why, while these are actually set up to go directly on a battery terminal, I would either install a fuse here or uh, 
install it on a fused uh, line. You, yeah, but you do want it on something that, that is not going to be switchable, that is always on. Okay, I'm fairly sure that this does not actually intend to be taken out. Um, there is a double-sided foam adhesive piece on the back. And that's about it. There's not much to it. Um, I will put an image of what's on here. Uh, I'll put a link to the uh, whatever this links to here. And um, I guess uh, the next thing I have to do is watch this tutorial video and uh, figure out how to work this and download the app. So let's let's do that. All right, so I was not able to get the tutorial video to work. The code that uh, they have in here, the QR code that you scanned, didn't actually go anywhere. Uh, I was able to install the app on my phone, and I did get a copy of the manual. So let's have a look through that manual right here just so we can get an idea of what this thing can actually do. So when you start up, uh, I'm not gonna show this cause obviously I have to type in my own uh, personal information. But as you can see here on the manual page, you enter either your email address or your phone. It also shows on here that you could sign in with Facebook or Google or Apple or whatnot. I didn't see that on my app. That might be functionality that's coming in the future. So I'm gonna have a look through the manual here before I actually show you what I'm seeing on my phone so you can get an idea of the capabilities because it'll show all the different functions that I may or may not remember actually to show you. So you get to show the main menu here. It shows you uh, the battery. So interestingly, it shows the battery status of your bike so if your battery is getting low, it's gonna show you that here. Uh, it shows the weather at wherever the bike is located, nice. It shows that the device, the tracking device is actually contacted and is talking with the server. And it shows the status, is it stopped, is it moving? Uh, also shows a little map that you can expand out that shows where the current location of your bike is. For the current day, it shows how far you've gone and you can hook this up with your friends so that uh, when you ride together with your friends, it can actually track that and actually show the location of your friends. Oddly enough, it does, the location and the speed are separate. You can see at the bottom there, you can see the current speed if it is actually being used and you can put events in silent mode and so on. Now, once you've actually registered the account, you can set up your name and picture and so on if you want to do so. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is add your device. So you're gonna that type in that secret IMEI number that is printed on the box and you can put it and name that as well. And you can also add vehicles. So you can add the vehicle that that, uh, tracker is associated with. The map page shows not only the location of your bike, but if you have friends that you've linked in with this, it shows their location as well so that you can keep track of each other on a ride. If you get separated, that's really helpful because you can just pull this up and see, everybody can see where everybody else is. Of course, that assumes you're all using these trackers and all have them enabled and, and sharing with one another. It records individual trips, so it not only just shows the actual location, but it records the the location over time uh, along with uh, maximum acceleration and maximum speed. I don't know why you need to know those. Maybe you want to know the minimum speed as well. I, for whatever reason, if you want to know the minimum and maximum speed of the day and your trip, it'll record that and show it to you. And it records those trips over time so you can go back and, and look at the different trips that you've taken and identify where each one of them was. This is an interesting feature. You can create geofences. So if you know that there's a certain area that you would never ride outside of, uh, and then you actually ride outside of that, which is that what's called a geofence, then it will actually send you a notification saying, hey, your vehicle has moved outside that area. Conversely, if you had an area that you're not allowed to go inside, you can also set a notification if you go inside that area. So for instance, if you had this on one of your kids' vehicles and they're not allowed to go into the city, you could set a geofence around the city. And if that vehicle goes inside that geofence, it would send you a notification. Similarly, you could set up a geofence that's just your neighborhood and if your vehicle leaves your neighborhood without you being aware of it as soon as it does so it leaves that geofence it's going to alert you about that and you can have multiple geofences and they can both be internal and external so that if you had a geofence around your neighborhood every time your kids left the neighborhood you would know about it and every time they came back you would know about it 
That might be a helpful thing to know. The EcoDrive screen is telling you how efficiently you are riding in terms of acceleration, braking, harsh, sudden turns, and so on. So if you've ever had one of those uh, insurance devices where it tracks your driving to give you an, uh, a score and maybe a, a discount on your insurance as a result, this is exactly the same thing. It's, it's tracking that sort of thing and giving you a score on how well you're driving and it tracks it over time. Now that we have those trips stored, you can actually share them. You can export it as a PNG file, so just a picture of the map like you see there, or you can actually export it. That GPX file is a file of GPS waypoints that you could load into a GPS navigator. So you could send that to a friend and they could ride the exact same trip just by loading that file in. So say for instance, you found this amazing trip through the mountains and it has this great curvy road. Once you finish that trip, you go into your phone, into the Sys app or Size app or whatever you call this, and you can see the trip in there on the map and then you can export that as a GPX upload it to the your friends at Goldwing Docks, they can load that into their phones or their GPS units, and they can ride the exact same route, and it'll just basically follow, follow the, the DOS, just as you would as if the GPS was navigating you there. You do get a profile of your speed and how fast you are riding throughout the day each day, and that's obviously uh, recorded over time. You can share that as well if you like. The settings menu is basically where you can set all the different configuration of the application. I'm not going to go into absolutely everything, but you can change the measurements and the language and um, whether it's going to send you notifications and that sort of thing. You can set up notifications for things you need to know about or might need to remember. Uh, do I need to do chain maintenance at a certain time? Well, not with a gold one, you don't. But hey, my insurance expires in June. I need to remind myself uh, that I need to do to renew it before then. You can set a date and then it repeats at a certain time and it'll actually send a push notification on this application or you can have it send a text message. Other notification types that you can get, this is the, the good part, is if you have a low battery detection or if you crash, if your bike gets hit, if the device gets unplugged, if your bike gets towed, any of these things it will detect and you can have it send either a notification to your phone through the app or a text message. You can go back through history and see all the different notifications, which ones have been read, which ones have not, you can clear them out if you want. And then here you can actually get into the actual different notification types themselves. Uh, if, if you're getting a towing detection because, I don't know, maybe there's earthquakes or something, you can change that, uh, the, the, the sensitivity to that. Same thing for the crash or hit detections and how, how severe it has to be in order to detect that. Um, maybe your battery, it keeps triggering a low battery detection and it's false. So you can set what that voltage is going to be before it actually then sends you a notification. Now here's where you share rides with your friends. You can create a new ride and then you can send that ride to all your friends with a, a link or a QR code and then they can join the ride and then everybody in that ride gets shows up on here, shows how far they've gone and it shows their history. And of course, then it shows them up on the map. And, and so basically it's, it's meant as almost like social media for motorcycle riders. There are, you can create more details about the ride. You can give it a name, a picture, a description, and you can actually select which of the units, i.e. which vehicles or which bikes you want to participate. And then it's gonna show all the different participants who have joined the ride. You do have an annual statistics screen where it shows how far you've gone, how many days you rode, how many hours, distance, all that kind of thing. These are the widgets that you can show on the main screen. You can move them around and change which ones are shown and in which order. Okay, so the first time I start it up, I notice I get this error. I'm not quite sure what that means. So I did figure out what that meant. There's something wrong with the application in that when it tries to get permission from the phone to pop up notifications, on my phone at least, which is a Samsung S23 Ultra, uh, the phone disallows it. Uh, I tried working with permissions in the phone. I can't figure out what it is, but I think there's something actually wrong with the app. I've reported it to the company and they're, they say they're working on it. In the meantime, it can't pop notifications up in the application itself like you would for like email or, or what have you. It still sends SMS text messages notifications if you have it selected to do so, but the, and it does log the notifications in the application. It just doesn't pop up the notifications in the phone. So that's what that means and it's being fixed. 
Okay, so we want to register, and we do that by typing in our phone number, which I'm not going to show here, but, and there's the text message, and then you type that code into the thing and verify it, and then we get to our main screen. So we're going to have to add a unit. Let's add a unit. So now we're going to enter in that uh, IMEI. So I'm going to type that in. It's not letting me type it. There we go. It's showing nothing because there's nothing actually connected. So if we look at here, let's, it says it's offline. And we're going to change the default name to Scott's Tracker. And we can put in the plate number and model and all this kind of stuff. All right, so now we have this set up and we've got a little map here. It's not showing us any information at all because the unit is not actually plugged in and working. So I guess that's the next thing we need to do. So let's give this a try. I'm gonna create a geozone. So I clicked on geozones and we come to this map so we can scroll the map around and it's using Google Maps. So let's scroll to someplace where we want to add a Geozone, there's tractor supply. Let's add a geozone around tractor supply. I click twice or double tap on that area there and it comes up with a little circle that you can move around and change. And that is the geozone that we are setting up. So as I'm gonna try to scroll it around here and you can see I dragged it over here. I've zoomed it in and out. So now let's give it a name. We're gonna call it uh, tractor supply. And I don't know why in this app, when you click on a text field, it doesn't actually pop up the keyboard until you actually click on the pencil, which makes no sense because every app ever, when you open a text field, it should pop open the keyboard. All right, so now we've created a tractor supply uh, geozone and we've set it so that it's going to notify us when we go in it and when we go out of it. So now back on the main menu, we see we have one geozone. All right, so let's go out, install it in the bike, take it for a ride and see what happens. Now, before I installed this in my bike, I wanted to find out exactly how much power it was gonna draw from the battery because I didn't wanna put it in and then have it kill the battery in my bike. So I hooked it up to my benchtop power supply and meter to test it. So I set it up so it was being supplied with 13.8 volts, which is a standard voltage when your bike is running. And it was drawing 160 milliamps. Um, that was a little bit concerning. Now it fluctuated up and down and I did see it go as high as 162.7, but it was pretty consistent right around 160. That's concerning because that amount of current will kill the battery in your bike over time. But then I thought, hmm, I wonder, that's, that's what it says it's drawing when the bike is running. What happens when the bike is not running. So I turned my power supply down to 12 volts. And when I first powered it up, it was taking about 36 milliamps, which is not, it's still too much, but not bad. But after uh, about 10 or 15 seconds, it settled down to a draw of only 10 milliamps. That's fine. I mean, a 10 milliamp draw is is not much more than the, the memory on your radio takes to, to maintain it. So 10 milliamps is nothing. I let it sit for that for quite a while and it never went much above 10 milliamps. So that's fine. I don't think this will have an effect on your battery as long as you're not letting the bike sit for absolutely months and months without being run or not being on a battery tender, which you should be doing. So the power draw is not a concern. I did mention that you shouldn't connect these wires directly to your battery because it's not fused. So for testing, what I did is I took a, a fused 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter and I just connected and heat shrunk the uh, insulation on there so that I can just plug it into the cigarette lighter adapter that I have in my bike, power the thing just for testing because I also don't know where I'm gonna install this yet if I'm gonna run it directly into uh, somewhere in my bike that has power at all times. Uh, looking at the notifications, you notice I can only see two of them. If I click on the map button, uh, I expected that I was going to be able to see the notifications on the map, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I can zoom in and it's uh, showing various things where I rode, but it's not showing the, the actual notifications on the map. 
So I went back and, and you can notice I can't scroll those. So it's only showing two. So even though I went through and had several notifications show up and, and it showed at one point there was like six or eight notifications, I can only see two of them and there's no way of actually getting beyond that. Uh, I think that's probably an issue with the, the application itself and I haven't figured a way around that. I've reported that to the uh, uh, manufacturer. So I did go ahead and end this, this ride and so of course now it shows that I have no active rides. So let's have a look at that ride. It shows that I rode 14 miles and it took me 33 minutes of which 14 minutes was sitting and idling, interesting enough. Uh, here's the time that I had stopped. Obviously I had it turned on for a while so it was uh, 23 hours showing there. That's, not, that's from testing. But here you can see the area is exactly where I rode and it, it did track that very accurately. You can see I did in fact go to Tractor Supply Company. Uh, it, it shows my statistics here that my maximum acceleration, maximum braking, and the overall distance. So here's my statistics for the ride. I accelerated at a maximum of 15.4 feet per second squared. Uh, if that means anything to you, and I braked at a maximum of 11.8 feet per second squared. I got up to 68.4 miles per hour, and you can see the, the locations where each of those things happened, which is kind of interesting. You can also look at past rides, and you can pull up a calendar to see the different dates that you have rides on. So you can go back in history and have a look at rides to see where you went and when. Having a look at the speed chart, you can see it shows over the course of a 24 hour period what my average speed was by time. And it shows the maximum and average speed and so on. Looking at the main menu, you can see the current status. It's the bike is sitting at 12 volts, which it should be because it's off. It says the tracker is online, so it's communicating. It has the outside weather and it says on stop. So basically it means it's stopped when you're riding that little thing shows, uh, I think it shows driving or riding or something along those lines. I, I don't, I remember looking at it briefly, but it said riding or, or it showed that you were actually moving. So if I have a look at the text messages on my phone, you can see here that I, I got unauthorized movement, which is, you know, it was being towed. The bike was being moved without being turned on. And you can see where I disconnected the unit. It also notified me there as a text message as well. So where I ended up putting this was in my left pocket of my cubby because I have a 12 volt socket in there that I put in, I don't know, years ago. So I just plugged that in and it's powered at all times. So the bike, even when the bike is shut off, this is still powered. And then I went out and rode around for a bit to see what I got. Interestingly enough, this must have a rechargeable battery in it because even when you unplug it, obviously it has no more power, but it's still running because it then transmits, hey, I've been unplugged. So you get a notification that, that this has been disconnected from your bike, which is interesting because uh, a lot of trackers, when you disconnect them from power, they're dead in the water, but not this one. It just, it keeps running. So there must be either a super capacitor or a, a battery or something in here that keeps it running for a while after it's been disconnected from power. So the question is, how does it work? The tracking device itself works very well. The GPS sensitivity on it is incredible. When I had it down in my basement, as I was testing the power consumption of it, it was actually detecting that it was connected and it was transmitting and connecting and it sent the GPS position of this from my basement. So it picked up GPS signals even though it was in my house in the basement and transmitted it back to the, the application, which is very impressive. I, I don't know, I don't think my phone even can pick up GPS signals in the basement, but this thing did. Maybe it's picking up a cellular position, but I don't think so because it was a very accurate GPS position. So I was really impressed with that. So a, a lot of trackers, if the bike is put inside somewhere or if it's inside a a shipping container or something of that sort, the GPS is done. You don't have any GPS tracking at all, but this thing worked. It, it just keep, it, it picked up a GPS position and transmitted it. So that was impressive. 
it definitely tracks and reports back that tracking very accurately and very consistently. You could see my track on the map. You could see exactly where I rode. Uh, when I rode into and out of my geo zones it, 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 around the tractor supply, it definitely detected that. Um, the notifications sent to my phone were mostly consistent. It definitely sent me a message when I disconnected it. Oh, when I first put it in, uh, I didn't turn my bike on. I left my bike turned off and I rolled down the driveway because I've got a bit of a slope. So I pushed the bike out of the garage and I just rolled down the driveway. And just that movement from my garage down to the street was enough to tell for the tracker to detect that, hey, it's being moved, but the bike isn't on. So it reported uh, unauthorized motion, I think was the name of it, and it sent me a text message for that. So it sent me a text message saying, hey, it's being towed or moved or whatever. And it also sent me a text message saying, hey, it's been disconnected. I did have the text messaging turned on for the geo zones, but I did not get text messages for those. However, it did show those notifications in the app. The app itself uh, definitely needs some work. I should qualify that in that the app itself was only released by the manufacturer a week ago. Uh, I know I actually received this some time ago and the manufacturer told me, hold off because we're working on a new version of the app. So hold off, hold off. So each week I'd get a message saying, it's almost there, we're almost there. So the app literally was just released. Obviously all the functionality in it is not there. Obviously not all the bugs are worked out in terms of formatting and so on, uh, but it really looks like it's going to be a fantastic application once they've got all the features that they have set up for it working. In the end, this is a really reliable tracker and very accurate. Everything I did was reported accurately back to their systems. And really at that point, you're at the mercy of the application itself. Yes, their backend system was sending texts out and we just have to assume that that backend system that is doing that is always going to be there and working. Uh, the application also hooks up into their backend system and works back and forth to allow you to retrieve that data in certain ways. You can see your notifications, organize your rides, set up your geo zones, all those sorts of things. For the cost of this thing, it's really a no brainer. It works extremely well and there's no service fees. Once you buy it, that's it. That's all the outlay you have. There's no ongoing charges for this and the ongoing use of it and the application and everything is free. So that's just fantastic and it just blows every other tracking service out of the water there because all those other systems require you to either pay monthly or annually if, if not for a membership for a SIM card and, and minutes and so on for it to continue functioning. This one, nope. It obviously talks on the cellular networks. It has to. There's no other way for it to communicate. So it is talking to the cellular networks and who's paying for that? I have no idea, but somebody is because this is working. The app is working. It's sending text messages. So I assume they're paying for that out of the sale price of this. I don't know what the business model, I can just tell you that it works. Would I recommend buying it? Yeah, actually, it's, it's a good product. It will definitely track your bike if it's stolen. It tracks it if it gets hit. It tracks it if you uh, are in an accident. If somebody were to knock your bike over, it's gonna notify you. It tracks geo zones. The application, it has great promise especially if you have group rides and you have a number of people with this, keeping the group together, helping people if they get separated, and where it, it records your routes and then you can export that as a GPX file so that you can share it with others, that's an amazing functionality that no other trackers I've seen have, and this one has it built in, and it's free, it's included. So, that, I mean, no brainer there. So, should you buy it? Yeah, you should. It's, it's a really great tracker. Now, I will say the manufacturer has given me a discount code that I can share with you, and I'm gonna put that in the description of this video. That code will get you a discount if you buy this, so if you are gonna buy one of these, make sure you use the link in the description of this video so that you get the discount that's been given to all the Goldwing Docs viewers and members. And that's it, that's the SysApp Tracker. Am I gonna keep it? Yeah, I'm gonna install this in my bike permanently. So I, I will find a place where I can hide it and then run a fused wire down to the battery so it's powered at all times. Uh, and a Goldwing, there's, you got no problem. You can hide that anywhere. Other bikes, you might have a little bit of a pr trouble. It's kind of, 
No, it's not too thick. You could probably get that underneath a lot of seats. Uh, it seems to be potted weatherproof, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. So I'm going to put it in, start tracking my rides, and see where I'm going. If you like what you saw, please click like. Hey, leave a comment down below if you have any comments, questions, suggestions. I, I read through all of those. And of course, click subscribe with the little bell because that gets you a notification every time I post one of these videos and you don't want to miss one. All right, thanks for watching.